What's up guys, I'm Derek Harris here out at HP Race Development and I've got a great video for you. So we're gonna answer some questions you might have about your new KTM, Husqvarna, or Gas Gas 250F. First off, does your map switch do anything? Does this thing actually change how much power your bike makes? What about traction control? What does it do? What does it mean? What settings should I run? We're gonna show you what it does on the dyno. How about this? Your bike has the option to come with this, air filter cover with some holes in it, you got your stock air filter cover. What does it do? How much power is it worth? Is it waking the bike up like the magazine say it does? How about a slip-on? This is one of the best slip-ons you can buy when it comes to price and quality and fitment and generally regarded as one of the best pipes in the industry. Factory KTM runs this Act Rapovich exhaust. Now, of course, they're running the full system, but what about a slip-on? Can you just throw a slip-on on your bike and get two, one, three, four, five, six horsepower? What kind of power does a slip-on do to your bike and what kind of changes do you need to make it work the best it can? Follow along, we're gonna show you all that in today's video. Here we go. First things first, let's check out map one versus map two. This is with the slip on on the bike. We tested it with the stock system and got the exact same difference in results. So map two is in green, map one is in blue. As you can see, map two is slightly better. Not a lot, but slightly. Biggest difference, it's got more timing and a little bit leaner. I actually don't like the leaner aspect of it, but the timing is what adds the horsepower here. And uh, it also makes the bike feel a little bit more rev happy. Some people say, I don't like how fast it revs out in map two or something along those lines. I hear that a lot on the Honda. Well, when you make more horsepower, both stop running at the same RPM. They have the same rev limiter. Why do you guys think that it's going to be able to rev and pull forever? If you're making horsepower, which the KTMs do up top, the bike pulls to the limiter. It doesn't want to pull past that because you hit a literal rev limiter. So when you make more horsepower, it shortens how long your bike pulls. Got to get used to that, guys. And, and if you want to map that out, which some people are doing on this Yamaha because it's making more power this year. So all you're doing is slowing your bike down so that it doesn't make as much power. In my opinion, I mean, just learn to shift. I mean, sheesh, you want all the acceleration you can get. This is a race bike. This isn't, you know, this isn't a bike that you're just trying to leave in second gear for the whole time. We're trying to win races. That means shift the bike as needed. All right, let's move on to the next test. So that shows you one and two. the notes up here at the top baseline pole stock bike map two no holes in the air cover akrapovich slip on uh and it doesn't have the insert in there there's there's a couple inserts in that particular exhaust it's got it's a third gear run and this is in map two with no traction control this is the early testing that we're doing and then we'll move on to some other testing so i'm going to graph this and then i'm going to add another test and i'm going to show you which test we added we added oops so the test that's overlaid here is, is uh, test seven here at the bottom. Test seven happens to be the exact same test, except it has the air box covered with the holes in it. So that's seven over here. Okay, in, in red for horsepower, we'll take torque off. It doesn't really matter. Um, all right. In green is with the air box cover off. And you can see it's slightly, and I mean very slightly better through the mid-range. About the same, and then slightly better in the top end. We're not talking huge differences, okay? So if you think that it's better with your airbox cover off, great, ride your bike with your airbox cover off. If you think it's better with it on, great, ride it with it on. The majority of tuning changes you're getting there is uh, mapping changes. So it's just changing the mapping a tiny, tiny bit. You're also getting some resonant changes within the airbox itself. So how the pressure pulses work change the airbox. <laughs>
got the test I want. So currently, and what we're going to graph is map 2 with Akrapovich slip on versus stock exhaust. So the stock exhaust is in green and the Akrapovich slip on is in blue. And this is both in map two, these exact same run that we showed you earlier for map two in blue here. All right, and then green is now the stock exhaust. As you can see, the stock exhaust, really, really good. Uh, slightly better than the slip on. Has to do with the mapping a little bit. Just a little bit to do with the mapping. We can make it better. It's not a bad slip on, but you're not gonna find a lot of horsepower with this stuff. These manufacturers are wicked smart, all right? They're wicked smart. They're not stupid. Now, you may like the way it feels on the track, and that's a whole different discussion, but if you want to win drag races, a.k.a. hole shots and go faster on the track, you need horsepower. That's what the dynos measure. They're not special tools. They're literally a weighted drum on this particular one. It's an inertia dyno. It's a heavy drum, and it measures how long it takes to spin it. The faster you spin the drum, the faster your bike is. I promise you, it ain't lying to you, and we, we back this up with some drag racing later in the future. So the stock exhaust, map two, really, really good. All right? Slightly better than the slip-on. And we've tested all sorts of pipes from all sorts of manufacturers. Very rarely do they make great power. Sometimes they make a little bit better, and we usually can figure that out with mapping, meaning it altered the mapping when you change a pipe. And then sometimes a bike likes that, and sometimes it doesn't. So you got to be careful. If you think there's a ton of power there, I'm sorry, guys, there just isn't. So there it is, slip-on versus standard exhaust. Let's get back at it on this KTM 250F testing. This applies to your gas gas and Huskies, of course. We're already showing you a lot about what the MAP1 and MAP2 does. We're showing you what a slip-on does. We're showing you what the airbox cover does. All of that we've shown you already. Now, let's move on to traction control and what it does for you when you're riding, when you're testing, everything that's going on with that. So, in order to do this testing, I know it's a little bit of talking. In order to do this testing, this is our procedure. What we're going to do is we're going to run the bike in second gear, third gear and fourth gear on the dyno with traction control off. And then we're going to redo the testing with traction control on. Now we're going to do this because I'm going to show you what traction control is on the stock ECU. And hopefully when we do that type of testing, you'll be able to learn and figure out what's going on. the complicated part of our video traction control you guys i got a lot of stuff to go through so i'm gonna do it as fast as i can but it's super super challenging to make sure that we get fair accurate data we did a ton of testing i got tons and tons of polls so here's an example this is a third gear poll with traction control on in green and traction control off in blue as you can see they pretty much mimic each other okay they're almost the same this is probably just dyno noise but eh, it's consistently lower so it's a little bit worse and at the very top we see this little spike pay attention to that that's actually important in later testing and then about the same at the top so basically in third gear the bike's almost identical to what it was before traction control slightly worse up top all right, and this is, you know, maybe a hair better, maybe, you know, hard to say, but because uh, of testing, you know, that, that's splitting hairs, but I would say that's a hair better down there. Um, and then down here, I don't think that's accurate enough for us to really to, to look at, you know, run to run variants. So um, in third gear, pretty much the same, a little spike up here, which becomes important in later testing. And we're gonna show you that. This is third gear. What about second gear? So I'm gonna go find this test file. 
open from all million save tests that we have over here. All right, let me go through these tests real quick. So we're gonna do second gear, traction control off 31. Open this up. Now every gear is going to give slightly different power and I won't get into all the details of that. Um, so for example, third gear versus second gear, you see down here, second gear is a little bit worse. Now this is with traction control off. This is actually not worse than third, but I'm not gonna get into it. So um, that's why you have to do individual and accurate repeatable testing. It's really, really important that you do that. So I'm gonna add a test here. And we're gonna go look at, that was a 31 traction control off. Now we're gonna look at traction control on. This is map two. All right, now traction control on is in green. Second gear testing. And as you see, it's very clearly worse on the way up than it was with it off. Unlike third gear, in second gear, the power is less, very obviously less, right? Consistently, all the way through, it's worse. And then again, we have this little pickup right at the end. Little tiny pickup, and I'm gonna get into that. But um, essentially, all the way up, it's worse. Now let's go to fourth gear, fourth gear, super important. Open from all safe tests. This actually caused me a lot of headache because I ran out of gas and I had to go get gas and freshen it back up. Right here. Nope, nope, that's not the good testing. Let me go find it again. Okay, here we go. Fourth gear. TC off. Okay. Graph, make graph. History log, I'm going to get rid of this uh, second gear pull. Now I'm going to add a test with traction control on. Okay. Which would be this one and now what do you know traction control on in fourth gear and we're basically slightly better at the very top side of things but long story short each gear has a little bit different results so second gear let me see if i can find that again second gear this one this one all right, so here's a comparison of the charts. If you look, second gear with no traction controls here in this light blue, and it's slightly worse in fourth gear, that's actually not. It has to do with dynos and getting tire slip, not tire slip, clutch slip, all of these factors, uh, how fast the inertia picks up versus how fast it doesn't pick up. So anyway, that's why you compare comparable dyno runs, same gearing and stuff like that. But as you can see, track control on in second gear is clearly worse. Right, and then they all kind of make the same power up top because their bike, does, you know, is making the same power. But in fourth gear, there's no difference. All right, we finished up our testing. In conclusion, what have we learned? Well, simply put, traction control is gear specific mapping. It's not traction control, and it shouldn't be. Your bike doesn't have any sensors. How could it possibly know if it's slipping the tire or not? Now, the Git stuff, they have some proprietary, patented Git power assist. Been around a long time. All the manufacturers have had some form of traction control in pro racing for a long time. And there's some things in there that the Git does that's patented, that's really, really trick. But on the OEM ECU, and we've done a lot of testing here, it's gear specific mapping. So what does it mean? It means when you have traction control on, on your KTM that gears one, two, and three are gonna have a little bit less ignition timing in each map, whether it's map one or map two. And when you do that, you usually knock a little bit of horsepower off, especially in map one, really knocks off quite a bit because it doesn't quite have enough timing to begin with. And then in map two, it certainly knocks off a little bit on the front side of the curve. And then at the very, very tippy top, because it actually has too much timing in that map, it picks up a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And that's consistent on this bike. Not true of all KTMs, but this bike on the 250F. So traction control is just a way to regulate or detune the power a little bit in the early years so you can get better hookup, right? All of you probably know that if you're in first gear on your dirt bike, I don't care if it's a 250F or a 450, and you just whack the throttle wide open, you're gonna loop out. So that's what their idea is to say, hey, you know what, we're gonna knock some power off of it in first gear and in second gear and a little bit in third gear so that when you ride the bike, it's more manageable and you can get better traction. Like 
Traction's key to going faster on a racetrack. That's why these crafty Frenchmen are so fast because they're not overriding the bike. Like Purcell was amazing at it, just getting traction and just going. Dungey was incredible at it, always finding traction because he didn't override the bike. Not to be critical of Barsha, love the guy, love his style, but I think at times he's so aggressive, he rides so fast and so hard, sometimes he's not quite getting as much hookup, much drive. That's where the traction control could probably help you. In the early years, if you just want to map throttle and not really find that traction with your hand, the bike's going to help you out. So that's what it does. Map one, map two, excuse me, gear one, gear two, gear three, a little bit slower with traction control on because it has a little bit less timing. And then in gears four and five, it's just full bearings. It's all the power. It's the same basic map you had before. So thanks for watching. We've got more to this video with an aftermarket ECU. Check that out coming up now. Another day and another test for your KTM 250F. We're showing you this bonus round, throwing it in the end of this video just so you guys can follow along. Check us out. What does an aftermarket get ECU do for you? We're going to show you today. We've got our custom maps in it. We put a lot of R&D. We've had years and years and years we get, years and years of testing on these bikes. So we've got a really good baseline map. We're going to show that to you today. And by the way, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe. It took me days to make this video, and it takes you seconds to hit that button. It costs you nothing. It means the world to me. I'd really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. If I can get it to 1,000, that'd be great. I got bigger goals for the channel. And if this channel grows, you guys are going to benefit because we're going to show you more and more and more stuff. So check it out. We're going to get clicking in the ECU. We're going to click it in. Boom, fire it up. Show you the test. See the results. Stock ECU removed. We got the get here. Just as simple as we're going to run this wiring down here for a second get it lined up get it in the connector smush it together click done skis and then to make sure all your hard work paid off we get the fuel pump cranked up guys just finished up on our get pulls let's look at the graph so oops so the previous run that we had pulled up which was a stock exhaust map to third gear no traction control uh airbox cover holes which is our best result we've gotten yet is test 19 you can check that back with our other tests that we've been putting up on here and then the get ecu is get test 56 on here same exact test stock exhaust no airbox uh, excuse me, airbox holes on the cover, the cover with the holes on it. And uh, of course, on the Git, we've gotten rid of the map switch. It has its own map switch and it has traction control and all that stuff, but of course, no traction control. And um, we're in the better map, you know, the, the map for power that we've developed. As you can see, we've got great gains, bottom to top, from the second you track that throttle all the way up the curve, measurably better. Right here, we got almost two horsepower. Here's about a little over one and a bit. And at the very top, it's a solid one and all the way through the curve just shy of one horsepower, bottom to top. That's a huge improvement. I know it doesn't look like a lot on the curve, but this day and age, that is a lot of power. You'd be hard pressed to find an engine component, just one thing that would make anywhere close to that type of power. So in order to make horsepower these days, guys, it's a package. It takes every piece of the package to work together to get big gains. Uh, so that's a really big gain. That's something you would notice. And that's probably the best value mod on the market. I mean, you can go spend a grand on a pipe and we'll show you another test down the road, in another video that shows a couple pipes on this bike, full systems. But uh, you're gonna be surprised, there's just not a lot there. Even with mapping, pipes aren't worth a ton these days. They're fantastic products, I love them. If I owned a bike, I put it on there. They're cool, they sound good, they look great, they save weight. They're beautiful products, I love them. Not talking down on them, but dollar per dollar, it's hard to improve bikes without mapping.